Greetings and welcome to Simmer's Morning Skate on SeattleHockeyInsider.com. Look at this! It's Tom Fitzgerald, the general manager of the New Jersey Devils. Fitzy, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? You are doing well. What the hell is going on with this hockey club? All right, let's just start with the, let's start with the goal line out. Last year, seven net miners. Let's face it, it was a gone show, a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. That's kind of taking care of itself, right? Yeah, I mean, we knew we had to you know, address it, um, not throw anybody in front of the bus. We needed to be better in certain areas. There were reasons why, you know, we had uh, 200 days. Um, and then we brought up a couple of kids who rightfully shouldn't have been in that position. One was playing in the USHL the year before. Um, yeah, and then you know, we pick up a couple other guys on waivers and uh, small little trades, and you know, you know you're losing seven more times. Um, yeah, I mean, but you just can't overdo it. And you know, we, are, we felt we needed to make some sort of change or, or addition was 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 in the and that's why we went on and created for the uh, potential. Very nice, worked out pretty well. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to have bad luck at a position, don't have it in that, right? I mean, especially seven guys, that's ridiculous. All right, work out from there. What? What? How is this? This is magic. Right? I mean, just a lot of talent. And, um, well, I, I think buying know, in. Lots of it. I mean, I, I, we as an organization want to get bigger on the back end and more mobile. Yeah. Um, we felt that all the top teams in the league have, have the size and ability, not that smaller players can't play. Um, and we'd worry about the size uh, difference up front, right? We weren't overly uh, concerned about you know, being big and mobile up front. But uh, I, I, you know, where we're at, you know, we get the commitment from ownership to, to go out and get a Dougie Hamilton a couple of years ago. Um, and Damon Severson on the right side is, is a hell of a defenseman. You know, pending UFA at the end of this year, not knowing really what will happen with him, we know we solidified our right side with John Marino in the trade that we had to give up, you know, one of our young prospects in Ty Smith. Um, we made the trades for Ryan Graves a year earlier, uh, Siegenthaler two years earlier, or vice versa. Um, and then we went out and got Brendan Smith. Good, good character, good leader uh, to really solidify the six, and then hope one of our couple of young kids can really push for a spot. Uh, knowing that we do have a couple of young high end prospects coming on the yeah. back end, so we feel that's our strength. And uh, obviously, up front, when you draft uh, two number one picks and Nico Hishi and Jack Hughes, you go to the, the yeah. middle and ratio. Uh, drafted Nico and then Jack. Um, we just felt as an organization, uh, we build up the middle. We've had success in Pittsburgh uh, you know, with, with Ray having you know, Malcolm Crosby and Stahl. And, you know, it's a, it's, it's a good start uh, to build an organization. And uh, you know, really, there are three Catalysts and Jeffrey Bradley has been, uh, from short of fantastic. You know, six round draft pick you are, Stahl's right there. Um, and you talk a lot of like that, yeah. you, you know, you're, you're in a good spot. So, and then just trying to build around those three guys with, with some acquisitions and, and trades or UFAs and a lot, but also allow our young guys to, to blossom and grow um, at their pace. We don't have to force feed them into the lineup. Of the right. and, and obviously, they have to buy into what the coach is selling. And you've got an experienced coach. And uh, are, are you surprised at all just how well it's clicked this? See this quickly, but kind of this great I think we started the conversation and it was about the goal um, This is only a couple of people using it. You know, a few. Mm -hmm. um, if you can get out of the goal and we felt where the metrics were last year and where we were going, that the team was in the had to just improve. Yeah, you know, he touched on the players when you are. Uh, and Kenzie got the bad injury all the way on But he's, he's played some really good hockey for us. Uh, that's all we ask, just give us a chance to, to, to stay in the game and then be able to win the game. And they've done that. Yeah. Uh, Tom Fitzgerald, by the way, 17th overall pick in the 1986 draft. And not the most glorious draft of all times, especially because usually there's one, two, three guys at the top that really dominate. But it was the Joe Murphy. Jimmy Carson draft. By the way, uh, do you happen to recall who the third overall pick was to the team you worked for now, the New Jersey Bulls? Uh, um, 
Brady. Yes. Neil Brady you know, from Medicine Hat with, with one of the classic worst 80s uh, mullets of all time. <laughs> of all we time. We all did. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think he ended up playing uh, about, I don't know. Those, nine, those nine, were the days. <laughs> about 90 games uh, in the National Hockey League. If you redid that draft, Fitzy, I would argue that you would, you would go top five or six. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You had a thousand plus games. Um, you, you, uh, involved, well, you're involved in the coach, of course, as a player. You'd go Leach first, Brian Leach. I think he was ninth overall. Vinny Damfus was in that draft. Yeah. Uh, Adam Graves, speaking of future Rangers that would win a cup, second round, first pick in the second round. Couple of Couple of Newman was in there. And then a guy who actually retired the same year you did, Scott. Scott Young. Yeah. Yeah. Craig Janney. Craig Janney was in there. But where do you have to be right in that top five if you reconstructed it? That's how bad that draft. <laughs> No way, dude. Uh, by the way, you, you brought this up jump, right before we jumped on here. You did win a cup as an assistant coach with the Pens. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the was that rank? I mean, you're not a player, but still, you're involved in getting it done. Well, it, was, uh, it wasn't how it was drawn up, that's for sure. I was uh, assistant gym at the time. Um, Part of my responsibility is always development with our prospects and, and then you know, being around our team. And, uh, I just gravitated to the coaching. Uh, really? Really? And, and, you know what? Reese was the GM and Chuck Fletcher was the assistant. And they made a decision to make a coaching change and um, asked if I would consider coming in as an assistant. Uh, and I said, sure, I'd do anything for the team. And fast forward, uh, it was February 9th. Um, I made the change, went in uh, with my family in Boston and, uh, for two months. Um, we were, don't quote me on this, but we were like eight to ten points out of the top spot, maybe. Um, we was Jack Hughes, which they were a pretty good heater um, there in Pittsburgh in 09. And things just started snowballing the way they were. And Dan Baldwin was the head coach, interim head coach at the time, did a great job of. Utilizing what we had in speed and style of play that, that helped us uh, really get through the playoffs. And, um, and playing Detroit back to back cups was incredible. And then, and then just a couple of low profile type players like Max Hobby can, can win you a can score two balls in the Stanley Cup and win it for you. So, yeah, it was a great day for, for myself, my family. I didn't see my family for. Close to a month at that time until they got on the ice and celebrated. So, yeah. and I think you said my ugly mug is in the back. I end. think it is. Yeah, I have to go. <laughs> I, I was on the. I was on the ice for I that. I got cup. my cup over my head. A picture of my uh, frame to my office, and uh, I'm like looking it. at it. I might be swimming on the bench. <laughs> I was I was on the ice for that. I, it was miserable because I grew up a Reverend's fan, so, <laughs> and I had traveled back and forth those the two years of those bad boys, and, and uh, I was standing behind. And the Zamboni at the Joe, when uh, Mark Andre Fleury made that save. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. Leaning on I blacked out on the bench. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, go back to Boston. You're, you're from Bill Ricker, which is basically Lowell, yeah. sort <laughs> of, not. close to Lowell. I get it. Well, I mean, it's not the same, but it's yeah. in that general well, just North Shore. You even call it the North Shore? Because you're yeah, not really yeah. by the shore. We do. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 yeah. I, I, I was, actually, my family's all from, from Charlestown. Oh, um, oh well, lived there when I was really different. young. Uh, my brother and I to to the Charleston Charleston trees. And, and oh, is that right? yeah. okay. Um, How close is that to Lowell? Oh, it's ten minutes. Yeah, ten minutes. Ten minutes. But you didn't. Did you, back then, Lowell wasn't it developed until a little later. UMass Lowell. So you wouldn't have been recruited there. Jack Parker probably would have recruited you, right? Yeah. At yeah. UPU. Yeah. Uh, well, I grew up on the Lowell games. They were Division Two at okay. the time. Um, I said this when I played for the Bruins. Uh, Going Friday nights or Saturday nights to the Ricker High School games was really everything. Like it was, that's where your friends were. And you watched these guys and some of their autographs. Well, these, really? Um, and back then, the Ricker, they, they were great. They, they, were, they were great. I wanted to go there. Then my family, my dad, and mom pushed me off to the Catholic private school, prep, prep school. school. Uh, so Austin Prep. Austin Prep, yeah. Um, but, but, you know, there's, we won a state championship there, and it was nine the Ricker kids on there. Um, so, but uh, I go to Lowell games uh, a lot because they were playing right at the Bullock Forum, which is now we call it the Chelsea Forum. Yep. Um, 
and, and and that was that was great. And then they came to Division One, and I you know growing up, you'd go to the UL hockey schools right after Labor Day because that's when tryouts were, and nice. you know, getting skate in the summer. But uh, yeah, I got recruited. To, uh, you know, you get five visits. Uh, I decided I didn't want to go out to Wisconsin or Michigan, which I probably regret now, just to see those get out of school. Get out of the- I picked uh, BUBC, uh, Providence, UNH, and UMaine at the time. Okay. And, yeah. Um, decided I was going to BC probably, and it was a visit to BU. I said, I really like this. And then my, <laughs> my third visit was to Providence. Um, and I think my third, maybe it was my fourth, and I, I just fell in love with the school, uh, okay. the campus. And, um, my dad was like, they're not in the bean pot. Right. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm going anyway. Yeah. So, so you became a friar. Yeah. Uh, that would have been Mike McShane. Mike McShane. Mike McShane. Yeah. A few years after Lou. Lou wasn't that. No, Lou was, Lou was our, was it long gone? Or? No, he was our AD. Oh, he still was AD. He was AD. Okay. Yeah, he was my freshman, my freshman year. Yeah. Mike, Mike McShane, Richie Milley, yeah. Scotty Borak were the three coaches. And our class, which was a bigger class, was the first recruiting class. Okay. Uh, yep, Lou was, Lou was the AD. Um, and that spring of 87, yeah, 87, he took the, he double left. I was going to say, it would have been right around that time yeah. that, he, that he was out of there. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, well after, people don't realize that Brian Burke went there at the same time as Bob Nicholson. And yeah. The same, yeah. Like, just, there's yeah. some heritage there going back, and obviously they've been better in recent years. Uh, one last thing, you and I both worked for the Toronto Ape Leafs at the same time. We were the only Americans at the time. I'm, I'm Canadian. All my relatives, and most of my relatives are Canadian. I'm, I'm a dual citizen. But at the time, I was just a Yank, and you were the only American player. And it was not a dream team. It was 0 2 It was uh, 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 not a dream like a Don Cherry, all our with strapping young lads from Ontario. There were three or four Swedes. There was a, it was a Kazakhstan with Antropov. There were mm-hmm. Czech, Slovak. Like it was just a mixed bag of, yeah. of players. A pretty damn realize, good team. I, I didn't realize that. Didn't realize yeah, that you're the only Yank, and then I hosted a TV <laughs> show, and somehow I got how I pulled that off. I'm not sure, but I was. Uh, <laughs> we, were, we were two Yanks working yeah. for the Leafs at the time. But it was a bigger deal back then to maybe. Yeah, yeah a little maybe. bit. I, I enjoyed my time in Toronto. Um, I have a son that was born there in '03. I, I would argue probably that only two or four of the next year, two or four was probably the most talented team I've ever been on. And I and I, I played in Colorado for, for a cup of coffee. Um and, and got a chance to play with Saki, some of the Forsbergs and the Mews and the Kaminskis. That was really talented, but I would put that Toronto team so, really? Oh yeah. I mean with Well you gotta remember we made some trades when Jay Moon I came in. Yeah. Try it. And made the team fourth. Uh, yeah, Matts, uh, Reichel. Uh, yeah, Robert Reichel was there. Uh, Renberg. Um, Ronnie Francis was traded. Brian Leach was traded. Oh, that's right. There. Uh, yeah, Phil Housley, I think that was the same year. I mean, if you go down, I think they had to be five Hall of Famers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Pat Quinn, of course. And Pat was great. You know, he was, the, he was, he was awesome to play for. Yeah. Um, just uh, what about in terms of motivation? I, w- I was doing television for a minor league thing in event. He and I shared the same agent for a while. Actually, the agent's a great friend of mine who's great friends with Pat as well. Um, I went to this event and I swear I was ready to run through a wall like, just absolutely run through a wall. I'm listening to him, I'm just like, roar, roar. he was great, you know. He was, his, his speeches came from his heart, his experience, understanding, you know. The, the, battles in the war that happened on the ice and I, I felt really like he was a tactician like that knew like we always practice you know hey this is how they forecheck we're going to break out this way but he wanted to play a really entertaining type of game I mean he, I remember Carlo Koliak whatever his name is Koliak yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, he was a young player with us uh, and he would pull up behind the net and stop set break up we, we don't do that. Right. We just wheel it and go. And right. we don't stop. We play an entertaining brand of hockey. We're going to push the puck up the ice. Right. Um, keep it. He was fun to play play for. Uh, he, he, but his speeches, you know, were were incredible. I remember thinking, Boy, we're going to have a hell of a morning skate. Because this is, <laughs> maybe we should talk like this before the game. <laughs> You're all jacked yeah, up. Yeah, for morning skate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So That's good. It's beautiful. 
All right, well, some people might see this. Uh, this is kind of boutique right now, Fitzy, but some people this might see impressive. this. Yeah, isn't that something? Save 70 grand on a camera guy, which I feel bad about because I have a lot of dear friends who are camera guys. I don't want to screw up that union, but um, some people might see this after the game, obviously. We're, we've got Seattle and New Jersey. This should be, speaking of teams that push it, yeah. this should be a hell of an entertaining little contest. I like yeah, I, I feel like you know Seattle and us probably saying the same to them last year on yeah. um, where they wanted to improve. Um, in, in the net, uh, they're, they're getting, you know, getting some good goaltending. They're a fast team. They're very disciplined. Yep. Um, there's a lot of similarities. You yep. know, it's let's not let's not feed their fire by turning pucks <laughs> over and allowing them to yep. go off the rush. So it should but, be a great game. By the way, you hate this question, as all GMs should, because it's just it forces you to almost throw, sort of throw somebody under the bus. But when they say, well, what, do you, what do you need between now and the trade deadline? I mean, you can say certain things without, if, when it's obvious, guys know what they're dealing with. But, you know, if you want to add size or you want to add depth somewhere, I mean, that's okay, right? Yeah. I kind of what really all you need to do at this point is tweak it. You know what? We, we feel, I'm always on the lookout for a hockey trade. You know, when I, I think people understand what a trade is. Somebody you can control. You know, not just give up really good future assets for a rental, um, and then they walk on. Right. And only one team wins the cup. Uh, I'm, right. I believe in building your team in the summer, yeah. and then if you can add to it uh, with some length on a contract that you can control, I'm all in. You know, and, and maybe there are some opportunities to do that. Uh, but you know what? I we go game to game. Yeah. That's it. We're we believe we're in the toughest division. Um, it's a dog fight every every night. Um, you can't you can't put your guy down because somebody's gonna pass you. So we'll we'll get to that bridge. Yeah, yeah. We'll cross it and we'll make decisions on, on really what we need. And obviously injuries will be part of that as well. You got time. You got lots of time. Looking forward to some great hockey. Fitzy. Great. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Bob. Great to see you, bud. Okay. Take care of yourself. Tom Fitzgerald, general manager of the New Jersey Devils. Rob Simpson, Simmers Morning Skate, SeattleHockeyInsider.com. We'll see you at the rink. <laughs>